want to talk a little bit about uh, a big trend, possibly be the most transformative trend in our industry over the next 20 years, is what we call the industrialization of design and construction. You're, you're beginning to see things like prefab. Um, and, you know, we're very excited when we can prefab a, a corridor rack in a hospital, right, uh, and bring it to the site. That's great. But the next logical step, of course, is just to be able to order that out of a catalog. I mean, there's no reason to design it from scratch, have it made by trade contractors one at a time, custom built. And, yes, we're getting some efficiency by prefabbing it and not cutting up raw materials on a site. You know, but the next logical place to go is, you know, there's only a few versions of that you would really need to be able to satisfy 80% of the needs out there, somebody's going to start making those. Now, somebody's going to start making combinations of slabs and structure. Somebody's going to start making combinations of systems and structure. And you'll be able to just specify out of a catalog and virtually assemble bigger and bigger and bigger chunks of things. And they'll just be brought to the site and assembled. And that's pretty much the, the way that they've gone with shipbuilding and they've gone with aerospace and they've gone with all the major manufacturing, capital asset manufacturing businesses have gone that way. And so all we really have to do is follow in those footsteps. And you're beginning to see the early signs of it now. And I'll share with you some of the things that, that we're seeing. There's a great example here from um, a mechanical contractor out in the Chicago area that I think a lot of called Hill. They were faced with a real challenge. Uh, they had to build a 60 by 60 chiller plant. Uh, normally, they would like to have access to the site, and they'd like to have three months to build it on site. Well, unfortunately, due to the nature of this particular project, they were only going to have access to that part of the site for three weeks. That was it. And so what they did is they built the entire thing off-site. This is that same chiller plant without the skin on it. Um, in their shop, tested it and knew that, that it worked and were able to put it together on that site. And they did it by breaking that down into these modules. You know, now this modular design, of course, you know, could easily be manufactured and it might be Hill, it might be Train, who knows? Uh, this is a big business opportunity, but this is definitely the way we are going to go, is that you'll be able to order these things. I mean, look at this, the parting lines between these modules and the finished model here, you can see these things could really just be cranked out of a factory and be had in a matter of weeks. So this is the view of them actually building this in their factory, in their shop, um, pressure testing it in advance. And I'm hoping you can see that okay. Because this is the, the most one of the most amazing prefab things I've ever seen. A 60 by 60 foot chiller plant completely built in a shop, operated and tested, and then broken down into parts and moved out onto trucks and installed. And they were able to get into the site and get it all up and operating in three weeks. But again, you know, think about this as a as a business opportunity. There's no reason these things can't be manufactured by somebody and be delivered quickly. So we're not actually custom designing these things and custom building them anymore. And I think that's pretty much where the industry is going to be going pretty soon. I'll give you another example. In Mexico, there's a company called ICA. And they're very well known for self-performing precast. But now they've gone into the correctional facilities market, and they actually built a factory. And they have a series of modules that you can virtually design. You can see here on the left, these things can be configured for endless numbers of actually very interesting designs. So you're not constrained in any way in terms of what your design is. On the right here is uh, one of the actual completed facilities. And here's a model, part of which you'll see here in a video in a second. But they can, at this point, from this library of modular designs, they can produce 50 cells a day out of this factory. So they're pretty much completely reinventing the correctional facilities industry. Here you see you put down the, the precast frame, um, and then out of that library of, of modular elements, their factory can make whichever ones are needed, and they're just brought to the site and assembled. So they're taking about 30% out of the time of actually putting one of these things in place. And uh, they're getting a lot of success in the Mexican market, and they have a partner here in the United States uh, that's going to go 
bring them into the U.S. market. So this is going to really fundamentally and dramatically change that, and this is their factory. They have a purpose-built factory specifically with these computer-controlled molds where they do research into materials and into uh, textures and colors and uh, fabrication technologies, and they can bang out 50 cells a day out of this thing. It's pretty incredible. And they're also doing the same thing now uh, with housing, which there is a great need for all over the world to be able to do really good quality housing and take advantage of this mass custom, what I call mass customization, uh, where you have computer configurable molds that can turn out one or 50 of, of something. Um, it's indifferent to them. They just pour the concrete in it and they're molded up and they go. So it's, uh, again, this is going to fundamentally change a lot of things. And then lastly, I want to point you to a company out in the Bay Area called Aditas. Um, a friend of mine was with Anchin and Allen, and he left there. Uh, he was a great uh, healthcare designer, and he hooked up with some folks from the silicon chip industry. And in the silicon chip industry, they've already pretty far advanced in terms of taking one basic design and being able to configure it uh, for all kinds of different uses in manufacturing. So essentially, they're taking that very small scale idea, and they're putting it to the full scale of being able to do hospitals off of a pre-engineered kit of parts. Uh, this is an example of a project that they did for Kaiser Permanente, which uh, won an award from them last year. You know, and the idea is they start with operational modeling, and it's all calculated for operational optimization. You know, see in this case, if your goal is to at a clinic time to doctor is 10 minutes. What does that mean in terms of all the design layout? And so as opposed to starting with the design, they're basically starting with operational criteria, and that is calculated to drive the design solution. Then they've got all these pre-engineered parts that they can produce in a factory. Their deck, uh, they have the steel chassis they're working with, Connects Tech, which is another Bay Area company that has these fast connect seismic proof, uh, not proof, but um, uh, able to withstand, I, I, a certain level of uh, seismic activity, and they can basically put um, an entire healthcare facility together out of this kit of parts, including all the interior um, partitions with mechanicals in the in-wall systems, and again, just bringing them to the site and assembling. So they're really shifting from lots of raw materials to the site, things being constructed, or even the idea of, of customizing a design and having it prefabbed into constructing entire facilities out of this pre-engineered kit of parts. And, you know, the beautiful thing about a slab like this that's made in a factory, as opposed to that one-inch tolerance across 10 feet that you tend to get uh, with field-built slabs, which make it really difficult then to use any kind of uh, prefabbed wall systems on top of it. Everything's uh, done with factory tolerances when it's brought to the site. And you can see here, you know, this is that design that they uh, won the award with from Kaiser, and what you see on top here is an example of some of those elements all put together in the space. So you're doing high quality, you're doing it much faster, uh, and it's less expensive than traditional healthcare facilities. So these are three examples, I think, that are pointing the way towards where this whole industry is going, and modeling is really at the bottom of all of these things. Because we're dealing with things at the digital level, now are able to actually implement at the digital level, much like happens in those other major capital asset industries that I talked about.